I'd like to turn first to the book of Judges, page 411, Judges chapter 8. And the story of Gideon. This man raised up by God for the deliverance of the children of Israel at a time of apostasy. And yet those around him did not necessarily appreciate what God was doing. And in verse 1 we read, Then the men of Ephraim said to him, What is this thing you've done to us, not calling us? When you went to fight against Midian, and they contended with him vigorously. But he said to them, what have I done now in comparison with you? Is not the gleaning of the grapes of Ephraim better than the vintage of Abiezer? God has given the leaders of Midian, Oreb, and Zeb into your hands. What was I able to do in comparison with you? Then their anger toward him subsided when he said that. Then Gideon and the 300 men who were with him came to the Jordan, crossed over, weary, yet pursuing. Mm. <clears throat> weary, yet pursuing. Things can get to us. Things can wear us down. The question is, are we going to go on? Are we going to press on toward the price, the upward goal in the Lord Jesus Christ? There's nothing that can discourage us more than brothers and sisters in Christ. There's nothing that can get to us more than our brethren when they say or do things to us. Turn to Psalm 55. We are warned by Jesus that in the last days, not only will we suffer persecution, <clears throat> but we will be betrayed by brethren. How do we deal with that? How do we look at that? How do we get through that? That's what I want us to think a little bit about this morning. Psalm 55 then. I read from verse 11. Destruction is in her midst. Oppression and deceit do not depart from her streets. For it is not an enemy who reproaches me. Then I could bear it. Nor is it one who hates me who has exalted himself against me. Then I could hide myself from him. But it is you, a man my equal, my companion, and my familiar friend. We who had sweet fellowship together, walked in the house of God in the throng. Let death come deceitfully upon them, let them go down alive to Sheol, for evil is in their dwellings, in their midst. As for me, I shall call upon God, and the Lord will save me. Evening and morning and at noon, I will complain and murmur, and he will hear my voice. He will redeem my soul in peace from the battle which is against me. For they are many who strive with me. God will hear and answer them. Even the one who sits enthroned from of old, with whom there is no change, and who do not fear God. He has put forth his hands against those who were at peace with him. He has violated his covenant. His speech was smoother than butter. But his heart was war. His words were softer than oil, yet they were drawn swords. 
cast your burden upon the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never allow the righteous to be shaken, but thou, O oh God, will bring them down to the pit of destruction. Men of bloodshed and deceit will not live out half their days, but I will trust in thee. We can put up with, to a certain extent, those that we expect to be in opposition to us, those that we expect to hurt us, those that we expect to mistreat us. We expect opposition from the world. We expect things to go wrong. But more and more in the last days, the biggest problem will be with those who are supposed to be believers. Mm. Such are days of apostasy. The book of Judges is as a book of apostasy. The whole uh, history of a period of the children of Israel. When everyone was doing what was right in, in his own eyes. And they were attacked. They were handed over to the power of the enemy. To bring them back to God. God raised up deliverers again and again. Throughout the days of the judges. But the worst and the most bloody battle was the last one, which was brother against brother. And so it is. It's so much harder. That's what the psalmist is saying here. He's saying we, it, 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 it would have been bad enough. I could have dealt with it if it, if it had been an enemy. But... When it's someone that we've walked with, when it's someone that we've had fellowship with, when it's someone that we consider to be a believer in Christ that hurts us, it's a different matter. And how do we deal with that? Turn please to <clears throat> the book of Galatians and chapter 5. We're warned that there is enmity between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness. But there's another enmity that we need to bear in mind. And it can be among us, it can be in us. Galatians chapter 5, and reading from verse 19. It says, now the deeds of the flesh are evident, which are immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions. Hmm. Envying, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these, of which I forewarn you, just as I have forewarned you, that those who practice such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Verse 17, the flesh sets its desire against the spirit. And the spirit against the flesh, for those things are in opposition to one another. So that you may not do the things that you please. The flesh wages war against the spirit. There's an enmity, dear friends, between the flesh and the spirit. Mm. And when believers are acting in the flesh, it causes what? Enmity. Strife, dissensions, envy, factions, all these things. Because there is an enmity between the flesh and the spirit. What is the answer? Walk in the spirit. <laughs> that you might not fulfill the desires of the flesh and its lusts. But when people are not walking in the spirit, and they're walking in the 
flesh, there's an enmity. There are problems, dear friends. There are problems with believers who are simply walking in the flesh. It causes problems. It causes an enmity. And we need to learn how to deal with it. It's going to happen more and more if it's not happened already mm. in your walk with the Lord. That you'll come into conflicts. You'll come into problems. There will be strife. It is one of the fruits of the flesh. Strife, envy, dissensions, factions, problems. Because there is an enmity between the flesh and the spirit. We need to recognize that it's there. And it's always going to cause problems. God says it's an enmity. It's not just something slightly off track. <laughs> it's something on a collision course which causes enmity. A problem. We're told to <clears throat> contend earnestly for the faith. The book of Jude. The last book before the book of Revelation. Jude in verse 3, Beloved, while I was making every effort to write you about our common salvation, I felt the necessity to write to you appealing that you contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. For certain persons have crept in unnoticed, those who were long beforehand marked out for this condemnation, ungodly persons who turn the grace of our God into licentiousness and deny our only Master and Lord, Jesus Christ. Within the church, there's a problem. And we need to contend earnestly for the faith. We need to fight the good fight of faith doesn't mean that we spend all our time arguing about doctrine, but it does mean that we contend for the faith. And we need to learn how to deal with those who wrong us and who oppose us. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 is something else that can cause factions and divisions and problems. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Read from verse 1. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual men, but as to men of flesh, as to babes in Christ. This church in Corinth Although, they had an abundance of spiritual manifestations. Was fleshly and very immature spiritually. Two things to watch out for. Fleshly manifestations and spiritual immaturity. I gave you milk to drink, not solid food. For you were not yet able to receive it. Indeed, even now you're not yet able. For you're still fleshly. For since there is jealousy and strife among you, are you not fleshly? Are you not walking like mere men? For when one says, I am of Paul and I am of Apollos, hmm. are you not mere men? What then is Apollos and what is Paul? Servants, through whom you believed, even as the Lord gave opportunity to each one. I planted, mm -hmm. Apollos watered, but God was causing the growth. Mm -hmm. 
so that neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything but God who causes the growth. One of the problems with spiritual immaturity is that people very easily latch on to a particular teacher or teaching. And then you get all kinds of problems. Well, so and so says this. But so and so says this. <laughs> well, I'm of him. Well, I'm of him. And before you know it, you've got factions. It's fleshly, immature conduct. Who is our teacher? One is your teacher. The Holy Spirit will lead us into all truth. Our primary source is the Bible. When we find ourselves spending too much time listening to a particular person or persons, there's a danger in it. 